our first one we're going to be talking about well actually you know what I'm going to run I'm going to run our little divider between our sessions so that way I have it here we go When we're talking younger, what age are we we're talking? We're talking, a lot of you have watched, this will be a, a special kind of Tuesday tip. A lot of you have seen my first part one and part two of my my getting, basically kind of reading a crowd. And we talked about the music that would work for older guests. Now we're getting down into that under 40 age. And I wanted to get all the, the ideas from all three. We're going to do only about 15 minutes on this. <laughs> that when we see a room that is under the age of 30, that's predominantly 20-year-olds mm -hmm. or even under, Let's kind of break it into maybe a teen dance and maybe then the 20-year-olds. Playing music for those, that crowd is much, much different than it is playing for the older crowd. And I wanted to get, kind of give some ideas to our, our viewers on what type of things, when we're think, looking at that crowd and we're trying to figure out what songs will work with this crowd, what are the, some of the things that you work into that equation as you look at that crowd? So. I've got too many jokes about age that I won't do here. <laughs> <laughs> and I, as I was talking to MJ, one of the things I, I was going at the other two sessions, there were three things that I would I would talk about. Yes, you're talking to me about something. <laughs> we were talking. We we're talking. There's three evaluation points that I was using that yes. what influences the type of music people like is the songs yes. that they were their parents would play that they would know because their parents played when, when they were younger. Then the songs that were hot during their teen years, and then their songs that were hot during their 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 adult early adult years when they were they were pop culture friendly or pop culture literate. When they got to a certain point, they weren't following pop culture most likely as much, especially with the older generations. This generation is going to be a little bit different. And the part I want to throw out and we'll get into discussion is the mm -hmm. one where they were influenced by their parents, I contend, doesn't exist as much with the people who are like 20, probably almost 30 and under because of this thing we're wearing right here is that kids don't listen to the same music mom and dad. They aren't in the living room list or in, in the house where the one radio is it. Now there's I, diff different music sources. I, I, I guess it depends. I think people will listen to that music and not admit to it. You know, like, okay, I'll, I'll give you an example. If I'm doing a school dance <laughs> and... <laughs> You know, I, they, they'll never come up and ask me for Bon Jovi, but I guarantee you if I drop Living on a Prayer, and I know this because I've done it, my DJs have done it, you swear you just spray money all over the entire room. People start singing the song like, you know, nobody's business. Um, but six years ago, my wife did a 13th birthday party and she played Shares Believe. It was actually a request. We're still trying to figure out how a 13-year-old, even six years ago, would know Shares Believe. But... With, you know, if you walk into like any hot topic on one side, you see all the emo and screamo and all those bands with weird names that sounds like, you know, you just played a bad game of Scrabble where you were drunk. But on the other side of the big wall are all the bands from the 70s, the 80s. And I see almost yep. like a big resurgence of people wanting to listen. I mean, it's for lack of a better word, it's, you know, it's hipster cool now to be listening to Pantera all of a sudden. I don't think anybody's going to request Pantera at a, at a wedding anytime soon, but we have gotten requests for classic rock music at younger events, which blows my mind. I'm like, you know, you're probably conceived to that song, but I, I don't how does think that work. Any... How does that work when oh. you say that at a junior high dance? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, honey, you were probably conceived to that song. <laughs> well, you know, you know, and it's on. And again, I don't think they'll they'll say that out loud because, and and I made that joke, but the people that usually freak out when I play that, I mean, freak out in a good way are the last ones. Like it's the same guy that's asked me for a Fetty Wap or rich homie Quan that starts singing Bon Jovi the moment we start playing it. So I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if me, maybe people are so tired of the same crap every single time that a throwback feels good, like a nice cold shower once in a while, you know, just a nice refresh or, or what it is. But at least in my experience, throwbacks, whether it's nineties, eighties, seventies, has been bigger now than it's ever been. Hmm. Interesting. I can make two points on that. One of them I was going to make when you said about people not admitting, you know, what they're fans of. And I just seriously want to accuse you, Arnaldo, that I guarantee you have many boy band posters in your room, don't you? No, but I will tell you, NSYNC's No Strings Attached for that year was the best album of that year. Yeah. <laughs> this is something that I heard DJ, um, um, uh, I just blanked on the DJ's name. Um, 
uh, anyways, I'll say it in a minute when I think of it, but he said, because of the fact of the shuffle option in MP3 players, mm -hmm. he talks about in live sets, sometimes you can throw an offbeat song, an older song in there, because a lot of times kids will throw something in their, in their device, phone, iPod, whatever, and it will hit that on a, on a shuffle mode every once in a while. And that's why he says that uh, Z trip. Thank you. Just remembered it. Their brain is working at this point. Um, Z trip said that, you know, that you can do that now. And I think there's a lot of that where you will get those random things and something that somebody said in chat about movies too, that things will get kicked back. And we've talked about before also. Yep. Pitch perfect stuff. We'll do remakes. And what's the other one that's on TV. Well, Glee, Glee's Glee. off, but Glee. Yeah, Glee, Glee is big. Yeah. Yeah. They did a lot of remakes of older ones, and those yeah. will, those will do some some bring back. So, but even in the movies, I mean, some a lot of the Disney movies, um, a lot of the animated movies uh, have some of the older songs that you know because I do a lot of the school parties and I do a lot of mitzvahs and I do a lot of kids parties. Kids, you know, when we I meet with them and you know ask them what are some of their you know, music dues and what are some of their top requests, they'll pull some of the songs that I'm just like, how do you even know that song? And they'll tell me, oh, it's from the, the Toy Story movie or it's from the Lego movie. It's from this. And they know those songs because they're from the movies. Or, you know, when we were talking about, like Arnando was talking about the, the music, a lot of things I do, which I'm sure he probably does too, is I play music that, you know, the older music, but a remix of it. Yep. That's, that's got the beat. EDC so, made that really right. good. So it's like I'm playing the, the older music that the older crowd knows the song, but the younger crowd, especially if you're doing a wedding or something and they got some liquor in them, they're, they're listening to the beat. They know the music. They might know the chorus, but they know the music. And nowadays, even at my mitzvahs and my school dances, like he said, Bon Jovi, stuff like that, they're singing the choruses. They know, they know it. And if I'm playing like a hard bang and remix, they're all into it. Mm -hmm. I have a hard banging remix of John Bon Jovi's "Living on a Prayer" and "Shots" that just drives me yes. bananas. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and another factor other than movies is I don't know if you guys saw me because a lot of people were making fun about this online. Whereas when uh, Kanye West did the song with Paul McCartney, and everybody's like, "Who's this Paul McCartney fella? Yes. You know, he's going to be real famous." He's going to get put on the map. So, so what happens is a lot of people don't know these artists. So they don't know that artist is an old artist when it pops up on their Pandora or iTunes music. So suddenly they're like, man, have you heard this new group Poison or whatever the case may be? They think, oh, it's a new group just because it popped up in Pandora when they were you know, looking for something else. So that might be also part of what's going on, too. True story. When I was a teenager standing in an actual record store, standing in line, there was a girl off to the left looking through records. She pulls up an album. She goes, oh, wow, look. Paul McCartney was in a band uh, uh, before Wings. <laughs> Everybody in the store stopped. <laughs> Paul McCartney was in a band before Wings. Did you know that? <laughs> it's, wow. Wow. Well, well, that, that was the show, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, have a great day. Exactly. I mean, like this weekend, I have the start of all my, you know, father daughter, mother son dances. And I do a lot of that stuff on those dances because I try to incorporate the parents or, you know, whoever they're coming with, you know, with with the kids. So, you know, I hate to say it, but I, I play those feel good songs that, you know, we get sick of every weekend. You know, I, I don't I do have to mention, you know, don't stop believing all those kind of stuff. But the kids know the words. They really they do. And but I try to play remixes. Yeah. And I try to play, you know, so at least it makes me feel a little, a little sane. But, you know, and the kids jump around to it, you know, you know, I'm telling them to jump around and, you know, they're, they're jumping to all that kind of stuff. And the parents love it because they're like, oh, you're playing the old people music. I love it. I love it. Yep. You know, so it's like it's the best of both worlds when you have the, the younger generation and the older generation and everybody's happy. Including you know, DJ. It's funny that you mentioned Don't Stop Believing or, you know, those tracks when you said, you know, the songs that after a while we hate to play because we're tired of hearing it. But I guarantee you that if a DJ convention announced Journey playing Don't Stop Believing Live, every DJ would be there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're sick of hearing that song. Oh, but you're in the front row with your cell phone. Right? I wouldn't be there. I wouldn't be there. I'd be like, it's perfect time to go get food. <laughs> because what you people talking about when, when Paul McCartney was on that song and, and I'm like, oh, that song's going to suck. That was my first thought. <laughs> this song's now going to suck. 
<laughs> um, oh, by the way, somebody uh, remember the band that Paul McCartney was in. It was Sergeant Peppers. Yeah, so. Sergeant Peppers, Lonely Hearts Club. Yeah. Band, yeah. <laughs> that was the band. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Go, Jimmy. <laughs> I thought it was like some Love. monkeys or I don't know. I don't yeah, remember the I, name. I, I have something. Some animal or <laughs> That's something. That's lovely.